Uh, Congresswoman uh, Moore, the, in, in addition, people point out that if you uh, have, you know, 10-year tax provisions, but you're only taking into account one or two years for the, uh, these new programs, that that's uh, disingenuous because they're going to be extended. Uh, so actually the cost is way above one and three-quarter trillion. Um, Penn Wharton puts it at 4.6 trillion. A committee for a federal, a responsible federal budget puts it at 4.9 trillion. So shouldn't we talk about, why don't we talk about what we're really doing here to the American people? What we're doing for the American people is making an investment. Um, this is the way we do budgeting in the House. When we pass the, uh, uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the Republicans tried to extrapolate from, from that that there would be benefits down the road outside of the budget window. And we are saying that if we provide pre-K at this point, that's not spending. That's an investment that we will benefit from uh, 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 our future workforce being educated. And so it's just a different way of, of, of looking at it. You know, the child tax credit is a tax refund to working families. Uh, we're looking at providing Pell Grants uh, to people who will benefit from higher technology manufacturing that's going to be, that's part of the infrastructure bill as well as this bill back, better it's a companion to that piece. And so we see these things as investments that will pay off. Now, many of them will pay off beyond the budget window. Uh, Congressman uh, Arrington, the uh, it's very, we're in a strange political environment here because we do see certain polls that, that seem to indicate that the American people are, are uncomfortable with the, the direction of the country. But when the most recent poll asked specifically about this Build Back Better plan, I think it was like 58% were in favor of it. How do you figure that out? How does that, how does that make sense? Well, they have to cut through the noise and, as you called it, the disingenuous scoring, it's, uh, I think it's misleading to suggest that this is just going to create a $300 billion deficit. The promise was that it would pay for itself. Even CBO with the Washington accounting gimmick, gimmicks uh, don't have this thing paying for itself. And to your point, these programs will be extended. They'll be made permanent. Ultimately, will cost trillions of dollars. I mean, uh, for folks um, who are trying to cut through this and understand that these taxes will ultimately depress wages further. They'll ultimately increase inflationary effects at the grocery store and the gas pump. These will drive jobs back overseas, giving Americans less opportunity. And when you have millions of people sidelined because of unemployment policies, like the enhanced unemployment benefit that paid people more to be out of work than to go back to work. Now you're going to repeal work requirements as you're expanding the welfare state and entitlement programs. We didn't even pay for the entitlement programs we have now. We, we're insolvent in the safety nets of Medicare, and that's being accelerated by this bill and other, other programs that we've promised to pay for and deliver for Americans that will be insolvent. This, this is a disaster. And um, I think people are waking up to it. That's why Virginia, uh, it went from a blue state to red and why you're seeing Republican or Democrats uh, change parties in states like Texas. Uh, Congresswoman Moore, it, there are another uh, thing to consider is we, we've seen some inflation that we haven't seen in, in a long, long time. And it, maybe it's transitory, maybe it's supply chain induced, but we have had a lot of stimulus and even uh, some Democrats like, do I still call Senator Manchin a Democrat? I'm going to, but they worry about uh, inflation and, and throwing more fuel on the fire of an economy that looks pretty good already. Would you really argue or can you make the case that, uh, like we've heard from the Biden administration, that inflation could actually be, uh, be cooled off if we pass a, another multi-trillion dollar bill? Is that really, do you really believe that? Should we believe that? Absolutely. You know, I listened to all eight hours and 32 minutes of Leader McCarthy's speech, and he ranted on about inflation. 
Uh, and of course, we're concerned about inflation, uh, gas prices, and, and, and food commodities. Not once did he mention what our own Congressional Research Service has done a huge paper on, the inflationary impact of the pandemic, duh, that has disrupted the supply chain. Um, not once did he mention uh, that. Um, also, severe climate change, severe weather has also contributed to the high rise in uh, gas prices. And inflation is one of these words that really scares uh, uh, ordinary Americans. This is, according to, I think, 17 Nobel laureate economists, I not being one of them, that this is actually an anti-inflation bill. Uh, when you look at the opportunities that we provide for to get people back into the workforce, think about the folk who were sidelined during the pandemic. Women who many of them could not return to work because there was no school, there was no child care. And even those folks um, who, um, who could find child care couldn't afford it. This bill is going to keep child care uh, at uh, no more than 7% of someone's income so that it can be affordable. Uh, how is it inflationary to provide a benefit to folk that they, workers who, who now have no health care in Wisconsin? I mean, we were one of the states where Republicans did not want to expand health care to America's people need work supports in order to go to work. It costs money to go to work. You need health care benefits. You need paid family leave. You need child care. That's my lived experience. And I mean, eight hours and 32 <laughs> minutes, not one mention of the pandemic, which this is very similar to what we experienced, we were in the war in Vietnam. This is this is the comparison to, to, to that. It's transitory, and this bill is going to deliver us from these inflationary impacts.